Out of the nine spawning sites, four were being fished without any restrictions and the situation was very grim. After the survey, we got all the policymakers, all the NGOs, the tourism sector to come up together in a national workshop in Belize City and to present the results of these surveys and to come up with management recommendations to see if the NASA groupers. A spawning aggregation working group was formed which included the co-ops, the fishermen, conservationists, NGOs and the fisheries department. The purpose of the group was to make recommendation to the policymakers for the future management of the NASA grouper and the multi-species spawning sites. We also wanted to look at the management of other commercial species that aggregate at those sites. These sensitive sites are vital to the future of the fishing industry and the health of the reef. They need protection. With the NASA grouper nearly gone, the fishermen are targeting other species at the site. I'm getting foggy right now. The pressure on the spawning sites was so great by this time that the spawning aggregation working group recommended the total closure of all 13 sites and also total protection of the NASA grouper. Dan Silva, the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries at that time, took the bold step in 2002 of making 11 sites into marine reserves with total protection. He also closed the NASA group of fisheries during the spawning periods of December through March. After this positive move, the working group put into action a five-year program with the NGOs and the fisheries department. With the lack of understanding and acceptance within the fishing communities of the importance of the role of the spawning sites, the group initiated awareness programs throughout Belize. Posters, radio and TV programs were made to increase understanding. The fishermen that were displaced by the closure of the sites now found it even harder to make a living. Fishing all right around here now. You just can't impossibly feed your family on it. The spawning group, together with their partners, initiated alternative livelihood training, like fly fishing and scuba diving programs. The most urgent task was the annual monitoring of the banks, which has continued to this day. But after five years of research, the results still show a general decline in numbers, even after legislation. Some sites show a fluctuation in numbers, but this is known to be a symptom of decline. So why does the decline still continue, even after legislation? Even though we had legislation, there was no full enforcement, so you still had fishermen fishing two of the spanning irrigation sites at Dog Flea and the Sandbar. There was no monitoring, there was no presence of, of the fisheries department um, monitoring the, the fisheries. The declaration by itself did not work. We were unable to have a 100% every moon of full management of these marine reserves because they were declared marine reserves. The evidence shows that more effective management is needed. The other equally important reason for the decline is spear fishing. The NASA grouper is one of the easiest fish to spear on the reef. Even in the closed season, NASA grouper are still being targeted. This is a NASA grouper that we confiscated from a fisherman because the season for NASA grouper is closed. It's closed from the 1st of December to the 31st of March. And this little hole that you see here showed that he struck the NASA grouper with a spear gun. With two sites open to traditional fishermen, it is impossible to know where the grouper fillet was coming from. With the grouper survival now critical, the spawning aggregation working group became more forceful in its recommendations. The first recommendation is to strengthen enforcement. We need to put our act together and make sure that we are able to enforce what we have in place. Uh, we need more political backing um, for us to be able to, to, to manage the marine resources the way it should. Because of the huge job of protecting the 11 spawning sites, which involves 24-hour presence during the breeding season, Perhaps additional organizations should assist the fisheries department with enforcement and management at the sites. The second recommendation is to limit access to traditional fishermen only. This should reduce fishing pressure. 
But right now the population is so small that even limited amount of fisheries by traditional fish, fishermen will have an impact on the remaining stock. The third, by introducing minimum and maximum size limits, the immature fish are given a chance to reproduce at least once or twice before they are caught, and the large, most productive breeders are spared. So if you don't have a uh, size limit, you probably will be sparing these uh, groupers that might be able to reproduce. Next, fish must be landed whole and not filleted at sea. It's difficult to tell a fish once it's been filleted, especially once the skin has been removed, whether you're getting a parrot fish or you're getting a, you know, rock fish. If we have any hope of bringing back the natural balance of our marine reserves, spearfishing must be banned. For stopping um, spearfishing in the reserve shouldn't be that uh, hard because each reserve or most of the reserve has regulation. So if you put a, a regulation as not to do any spearfishing in the reserve, the people will have to abide by that. We want to start by um, prohibit spear guns and the specialized fishermen will be able to still continue using their the Hawaiian slings, which is a phase out. And then a day afterwards, it will be used banning spear fishing completely using all apparatus. Finally, and most important, is full protection of the Nasser grouper year round for a trial period. Most of the Caribbean nations have fished out their stock and lost this valuable commercial fish species. Dr. Enric Salas said, if fishing continues, the Nasser grouper will disappear in Belize in the short term future as it has disappeared from Florida, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, and many other places in the Caribbean. Are we going to follow suit? So what, there's a proposal by the uh, Spanning Aggregation Working Group to actually fully protect the, the groupers in Belize. We are looking at that seriously. We are consulting with the stakeholders, especially the fishers, and uh, we will see what the way forward will be. But my personal idea, and that's my personal department, is that in the future we will have to protect that species. And the only reasonable managed recommendation at this time is total closure of the fisheries. And then we want to see if those remaining stock will be enough to reproduce the reefs. Well, closing NASA grouper all year round would cause fishermen to kind of fuss a little. But if you really look at it, the number of NASA groupers that these fishermen catch is hardly anything and so we would say it's hardly economically valuable to fish them anymore. So in other words, we can just set a moratorium, moratorium on it nationwide and have a nationwide consultation with the fishers so they can more understand what, what this is all about. If we don't fully protect them, we won't have any grouper within five or ten years. We still have a chance if we act now and give them complete protection. Are they going to be memories alive only in pictures? Or are we going to try to bring them back for the benefit of the reef and the country? In the end, Belizeans need to decide. Mm -hmm.